2 Samuel 11, 2. And it came to pass at eventime that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and the one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elon, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent messengers, took her, she came in unto him, he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, said, I am with child. Alright, so we know the story of David and Bathsheba. This is adultery. Plain and simple. Now, what we have is 14. Uh, you know the story. So we're going to... And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab, the commander of the army. Sent it by the hand of Uriah, and he wrote the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the bat of the hottest battle. Retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city, that he signed Uriah that, unto the place, where he knew the valiant men were, the best fighters, the elite. The men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. So we have adultery with Bathsheba. Uriah would not listen to the king and go home and be part of the marriage bed with his wife. Then she would, you know, there's the pregnancy. So instead he has Uriah murdered by his army. God's army. Joab, here's his order. Put this guy in the hottest battle. Not only did, did Uriah die, but it says some of the people, the servants of the... More military men besides Uriah died. So. Well. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. We know the story of David and Nathan. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, you're the guilty one. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over Israel, I deliver thee out of the hand of Saul. You're guilty. Okay. Verse 13, David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord has put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. And adultery and murder are sins in the Old Testament. There was no blood atonement. There was no animal sacrifice. There was no offering for murder, for adultery, sodomy and all that too. There are other sins. David sinned. Nathan said, Thou art the man. David said, Yes, I'm guilty. And God said, I forgive you. I forgive you. Verse 6. David's anger is kindled against the man. Verse 5. David opens up his mouth. The man that, that has done this shall surely die. Well, the Lord showed him mercy. That's like Adam and Eve. Thou shalt surely die. They didn't die right away. But they did die. The wages of sin is death. He shall restore the lamb fourfold. The woman, Bathsheba. So, look at verse 9. Wherefore thou despise the commandment of the law of the Lord to do this, e this evil in his sight. God watch you do it. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. In the name of battle you killed, you murdered Uriah, and has taken his wife to be thy wife. So, we read that God has forgiven, put away David's sin, verse 13. Thou shall not die at that point. But he said fourfold. And we have to learn that when we sin, 
When I sin, God doesn't send death right away. And there have been times in my life I came near death. I would have been worthy of death because I'm a sinner. But by the mercy and grace of God. Now David goes on. But the consequences of sin. An alcoholic ruins his family. And his employer. By everything that has to do with alcoholism. The wasted money. The calling out sick. Not being there. The drunkenness. Smoking. Secondhand smoke. Affects others. Not just your lungs. Other lungs are being affected. And you're wasting your family's money. Adultery and fornication and sex. Has not the marriage bed prescribed by God. And sodomy. And bestiality today, which is in the media today. This monkeypox and two men, how they're covering up. Oh, this dog was laying with them and he got the monkey. No, they were having sex with the dog. And that's how the dog got monkeypox. Monkeypox and AIDS or GRID, gay-related immune deficiency, came from the fact is that men were having sex with monkeys. Okay? That's the truth. Anything else is a lie. It's a cover-up. Because the world and the media is not going to acknowledge God and His Bible. So David said fourfold. We're going to look at David's family and how they suffer because of David's sin. And number one is Joab, the commander of David's army. And David and Joab, I think, were cousins. David's mother and Joab's mother were sisters. That relationship was killed. It says... Verse 14, how be it because of the deed that thou hast great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall die. People were going to find out, David, what you did with Bathsheba and with Uriah. And they're going to look at that baby and they're going to say, ha, adultery. Ha, the child of the murderer. Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bared unto David, the child born, and it was very sick. Sickness of that child because of David's sin, not the child's sin. Some sicknesses come because of sin. And some of those sicknesses come Maybe because of other people's sins. You can pass sexually transmitted diseases onto an unborn child. You can pass to an unborn child your heroin addiction. Your marijuana addiction. And that child didn't do nothing. Eighteen, And it came to pass the seventh day that the child died because of David. First of all, if there would have been no adultery, there would have been no baby. David and Bathsheba did not run to the abortion clinic. They let the child go full term.
The baby dies. The wages of sin is death. That baby was born in sin through Adam, but that baby did not sin. His mother, his father sinned. God struck the child because that child would be grown up to be known a child of a murderer and adulterer. I can't have that to happen. So David's sin of adultery and murder causes the baby to die. Bathsheba would be heartbroken, would be in sorrow. Her baby, seven days old, dead. Because her and David had a one night fling in an adulterer's bed. Now it says in Second Samuel twelve seventeen, the elders of his house rose and went to him and raised up from the earth, and he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. So David, during this time of the baby's sickness, David's fasting. David's in prayer. David is serious with God. The servants know it. Verse 20. After the child is dead, they tell David he's dead. Verse 19. David rose from the earth, washed, and anointed himself. Changed his apparel, came in the house of the Lord the tabernacle, and worship. Then he came into his own house. When he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. And the servant said, and What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive, but when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. What are you doing, David? Where's your mourning? Your son is dead. And you're over here having bread. In new in changed clothes. We get this from Second Samuel chapter three. Thirty three. And the king lamented over Abner who had died and said, Die Abner as a fool died. Now, Joab murdered Abner. And the hands were not bound, my feet were put in fetters. You, you weren't a hostage. As a man falls before a wicked man, thou fellest fall, thou. And all the people wept over him. They're weeping and crying over Abner. When all the people came to cause David to eat meat, while it was yet day, the funeral day, come on David, let's have something to eat. David swears it, so do God and me, and more awful, if I taste bread or aught else, till the sun be down. I'm going to have a little fasting done. And the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatsoever the king did pleased all the people. And the people and all the people in all Israel understood that day that it was not the king that slayed Abner the son of Ner. It wasn't David. Look at David's reaction. We just had a funeral. David's not eating. Respect. The baby dies. David gets up, changes his clothes. He's sitting down. He's having a meal. And he lost respect. With his servants. Oh, his servants knew something. Bathsheba was not his wife. She came to his wife. I know somebody, I'm not going to give no name, but I, one day I was sitting down, I was looking at the birthdays, I was looking at the wedding dates, and I calculated in nine months. Either these two people conceived a child before they were married. And I looked at the wedding pictures and I see that the bride had a baby bump. Now 
what are you going to do? So number one of the fourfold is the little baby that dies. And with that, David's servants lost respect in David. 2 Samuel 13. Twenty-nine, and the servants that Absalom did as Amnon, as Amnon, as Absalom had commanded. Absalom ordered his servants to kill Amnon. Then all the king's sons, every man, got himself a mule and fled. Number two of the fourfold is Amnon is killed by his brother. David's son kills David's son. Boy, things are getting. Now watch here. Look, look here. 13 to look real quick. Amen with sword back, she fell sick for her sister Tamar. And then he had a friend, David's brother. He said, you know, hey, come on, play house with her. All right, and we're trying. I'm not going to read the whole story. Verse eleven: When she brought him them into eat, he took hold of her and said to her, "Come, lie with me, my sister." Amon is in love with his sister, and she said, "No, nay, my lord." Verse fourteen. Howbeit he would not hearken in his voice, but being stronger than he, forced her and laid with her. Amen, David's son, raped his daughter, David's daughter, excuse me, David, David's granddaughter. Daughter of Absalom. Amen's son raped Tamar. Absalom murders Amon for the raping of Tamar. Now look at here. Absalom, her brother, said to her, Has Amon thy brother been with thee? It was common knowledge in the kingdom that Amon had the hots for his sister. Behold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. She was just raped. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wrong. And he did nothing about it. Why? Because if he would have done something to Amon, the skeleton of Bathsheba adultery would have came out of the closet. David couldn't do nothing at all. Now, he may not have raped Bathsheba, but David had sexual relations with a woman that was not his wife. Amon had sexual relations with a woman that was not his wife. David couldn't do nothing. Number two, the sheep of the four has been killed by his brother. David's son kills David's son because David's son raped David's daughter. The wages of sin is death, but there's consequences. There's consequences. There used to be times in the old, the old villages that a child would walk down the street and say, Ah, oh, that child is a child of the drunkard. That child was born out of wedlock. That child is a child of a whore. You can find those stories in the Bible. That child is a child of a man that's poor, can't do nothing, is worthless. Today we praise, we lift up, we put on a television show all the sins of the people, and we clap and we enjoy it. They enjoy it, I don't. 
So that's number two. Second Samuel 15. Verse 10. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, David's kingdom. As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. Verse 16. The king went forth and all his household after him. And the king left ten women which were concubines to keep the house. David's kingdom has now been overthrown by David's son, Absalom, who murdered Haman. Let me ask you something, David. Was Bathsheba worth it? Let me ask you, sinner. Let me ask you, styly. Is that sin worth the consequences? Diabetic? Gluttony? How does it feel, styly, to be missing toes and have no feeling in your feet? How's it feel? How's it feel to be, have smoked all those years and your lungs don't work well? Be with COPD, with emphysema. How was it, Stiley, smoking those cigarettes as you did? Yes, God gave me the victory. Yes, I don't smoke no more. But the wages of sin is death. I'm going to die because I'm a sinner. But the consequences of sin, the evil of sin. My lungs are not well. I told my wife she smoked cigarettes. I said, you need to quit smoking. I prayed she quit smoking. You got to stop that smoking. She got angry with me. She got upset with me. She grabbed the keys. Tell me I'm going to the gas station. I give her an evil look like I know what you're going there for. And she, I don't want to know. I am going to go. And then two months before she dies, she quietly told the doctor, I quit smoking. She quit smoking about a month. She didn't even tell me. She didn't want to tell me. September, December 2019, my wife died of lung cancer. And I asked the doctor, I said, is that lung cancer because of smoking all those years? He said, absolutely right. Tracy has had a granddaughter born 2020. There's a grandson's going to be born in October, November this year. She missed it because she wanted to enjoy her smoking. She blamed everybody. You make me sm smoke. You make me smoke. You make me smoke. This makes me smoke. Smoking relaxes me. You're in the grave because of smoking. How is the smoking? Was it worth it? Was it worth it? That alcohol, is it worth ruining your family? I heard a preacher's story how a man would let his sons drink the bottom of his whiskey glass. Oh, what a treat for my children to have that last little bit of whiskey in my glass. I give it to my children and they all grew up alcoholics and died as alcoholics. Is it worth it? Sins and Satan in the world, in the flesh, is not worth it. David tells us so. David's kingdom now has been overthrown. A soldier and soldiers have died because of an adultery. And he says he left ten women. Um, oh, I mean, 16. So he left 10 women, concubines. They're kind of half wives. They're wives. Okay? Find out where I am. 16.
kind of lost him or no. Alright, maybe chapter 16. Alright, 1621. Maybe this is what it is. 1621. And Aphel said to Absalom, okay, here we go. Go into thy father's concubines, those ten women, which he left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou is abhorred thy father. Then shall the heads of all them that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent on the top of the house, and Absalom went into his father's concubine in the sight of all Israel. On the top of the house, let's go back to chapter 11. It came to pass the time that David rose from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house where David began his sin with Bathsheba. Absalom has taken ten of David's wives and made a tent and had adultery with his father's wives. That was against the law. David had an affair with one woman, adultery. Absalom, I'll take ten of those women. Listen, my friend, listen, my friend, if you plant one tomato seed, you're going to get a whole bunch of tomatoes. Be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. One seed produces a whole bunch. You plant an apple seed, an apple tree in the ground, you're going to get a lot of apples. David planted a sin of adultery, and look at that. Ten of his wives has been in the bowel of the sin of adultery. My friend, your sin, styling your sins. Yours and my sins are going to produce other sins. I see in my children. I love my children. I look at them and I say, oh man. That's me in them. Oh. God, I can't believe they act like that. I can't believe they do that. That's styling. Be not deceived, God. Listen, I put under the blood. I confess my sins. God cleanses me. God forgives me. And I got to pay. I got to wait for those trucks to come in. I got to wait for those shipping containers to come in. They may sit out in the ocean for a little while, but they're going to toot toot into port. For David, they're toot toot into port. One son of David has killed one son of David and committed adultery ten times before everybody. David slept with one woman that was married and married one man that was her husband. We see that David, his wives, ten of his wives are in adultery. One, no, excuse me, two sons have died already. The baby and Ammon. And meanwhile, a sexually adulterous sin, Ammon rapes David's daughter. Absalom is overthrowing the kingdom of David. Number three, 2 Samuel 18. You better believe him. Don't you go, oh, David, 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 David. You better go say, oh, me. You need to go get down on your knees and say, Lord, you need to show me my sin. Lord, you need for me to confess my sin. You need me to cleanse of my sin. You need to forgive me of my sin. You need to show me mercy, be merciful to me, O oh, Father, for I am a sinner. And God's mercy and grace, he won't allow all the ships to come in. But listen, if you had sexual relations with a woman or women that you weren't supposed to be having sex with, when the door knocks and you open that door and they say, Hi, Daddy, don't go with the you mean.
when you go to the doctor, they got from like, I don't know, understand, I, I can't breathe, and you're smoking tobacco, and you're smoking weed, and you're smoking, and you're smoking, and you're involved in a job, and you're breathing things you shouldn't be breathing, and your nose is doing things, your nose is sinning against God by breathing in what you shouldn't be breathing, don't you say, oh God, it's emphysema. It's, it's lung cancer. Oh, God, don't you say that. You did it. Your sins did it. Oh, God, why me? That baby could have said, oh, God, why me? Those ten concubines could have said, oh, God, why me? Tamar could have said, oh, God, why me? This is sin. This is the product of sin. You want to know the knowledge of, tr uh, of good and evil? Eve? Well, congratulations. This is the knowledge of good and evil. Well, Satan didn't tell you that, did he? Did he? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Second Samuel 18, 14. And then Joab, that's the leader. That was the military commander. Joab. Is the one that opened up the papers, and the paper said, just plain and simple, in, in, in simple English language, kill Uriah. Some say that Joab would probably have held that letter, and would use it later on. Then said Joab, I may not tarry this with thee. And he took three darts in his hand, thrust them through the heart of Absalom, while he was yet Alive in the midst of the oak. And the ten men, ten young men, ten young men. You mean the ten adultery wives? And Joab. Absalom's paying for his sins. Absalom's paying for his sins. And what about Absalom? It slew him. Lamb number four. Absalom is killed in a tree by Joab, the commander of David's army that had the letter of David and David's seal kill Uriah in the hottest battle. How's it going, David? How's your sins? Oh, let's ask David how his sins are. 1833, and the king was much moved, went up to the, to the chamber over the gate and wept and said, Oh, my son Absalom, oh, my son, oh, my son Absalom, would a God die for thee, Absalom, my son, my son? Was Bathsheba worth it? Was it worth not going to war that day? Is that drug worth it? Was she worth it? The love of money, is it worth it? Moses refused the, the pleasures of sin of the world and rather suffered persecution with God's people. And I didn't quote that verse quick. There are Christians today, there are pastors today, you know, they go and they celebrate and they have fun, they have good time. Oh, we enjoy it. We go to Mickey Ratland, we do this, and we uh, hey, one day at the judgment seat of Christ, where's my crown? You don't get any. I'm not pleased with you. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it, David? David David said, no, it's not worth it. And David doesn't learn until later on that his wives had been adulterated by his son. And he puts them in widowhood. How do you put them in widowhood if they weren't dead? Because to David, they're dead. They have been abused. They have been adulterated. 
So was Bathsheba. You know, when David gets old, he's still married to Bathsheba, but they bring Abishai to keep him warm. He can't even have Bathsheba keep him warm. And he's got other wives. He found a great, wonderful woman named Abigail. She wasn't good enough for him. He had to get more. The third lamb dies. First king. First Kings. Is it worth it? I tell you, it's not worth it. First Kings 2, 21. And King Solomon answered said to his mother, Bathsheba, Bathsheba. Why dost thou ask Abishai the Shulamite for Abijah? That's David's son, Adonai. Adonijah. See, Abishai was, was brought into King David. Now, he didn't know Abishai, but she laid with him, you know, set two lie together to get he. David was old and cold, and he needed a woman. Why didn't they give him Bathsheba? Why didn't they give him Abigail? But anyway, Abishai comes in and she lays with the king just for heat. He didn't know her. He didn't have sex with her. She was an electric blanket. Adonijah comes up and says, listen, Bathsheba, can you ask your son Solomon, who's now king, I want her to be my wife because I want to assert the authority. He's already tried to assert the authority previously. But David put an end to that. Adonijah again is trying to assert the authority. David's dead. I think he's died by now. So Adonijah goes to Bathsheba Says, I want this woman. Now Solomon had spared Adonai and said, Listen, if you be good, you don't cause any problem, you be peaceful and all that, I'll let you live. But he's trying to assert the authority of the government. He's overridden what the plea between him and the pact between him and Solomon. Verse 25, King Solomon, a son of David, the baby that was born after the dead baby of Bathsheba, by the hand of Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and he fell upon him, Adonijah, that he died. Here is another son of David Killing the fourth lamb, the fourth son of David, who is this one has tried twice. This is the second time to overthrow the kingdom of David. Absalom did overthrow the kingdom. Absalom kills a son of David, being the son of David. Who raped their sister. The baby dies of a sickness by God because it was a poor testimony of God through David. The baby had to go. Then David lost respect of his servant. And who knows how Abner, I mean, Joab, has reacted to this. Remember, they're cousins. Amon, the second lamb, rapes his sister. 
and is slain by his brother Absalom, a son of David. Because David, raped, uh, David adulterated and murdered David planted an adultery seed in that murder seed. Look what's coming up in the field. Evil fruit by evil seed. Absalom overthrows the kingdom. And he is killed by Joab, the commander that held the letter to kill Uriah. an oak tree. Who Absalom murders his brother because his brother raped their sister, all of David, their father. Adonijah tries to overthrow the kingdom twice. The first time he calls on Joab and Joab takes part. And he makes a pact with Solomon. And Ananias seeks the woman that kept David warm. No marriage bed relations. He defiled his compact his agreement with Solomon. And Solomon, the son of David, has Adonijah killed for trying to assert the authority of David's kingdom twice. Is sin worth it? I know or heard of a man who lived a wicked life. He said he's saved. He's in heaven today. A well-known man. I think he's had four or five children. And because of his life, I won't go into details, not my place to say. But when his babies were born. He would look at the fingers and the toes, wanting to see if his sin had caught up with him. Not always do our children who go astray, not always is it the parents' fault, but open that closet door and give those skeletons to God. No one can blackmail you unless you open that door and let the blackmailing skeletons out. Oh, you know, if you don't tell anybody, uh, I'll tell them, unless you give me $5,000, whatever it is. You say, where are you going? Open the door up. All right, I'm going to tell you. This is what happened. And I know it's hard. But if you are involved in alcohol and it is hard, yes, it is. You not only must confess that sin, you've got to quit. You're affecting others. And you're wasting money. In morality, in carnalness, in every, every, every sin you were involved in, 
and whether nobody knows about it. God does. Satan does. And you do. There will be consequences. I am 50 something years old today. I don't know how old I am. I got a birthday coming up. I think I'm 53 or 54 years old. Somewhere around there. I am very, very amazed on the things that I did. I've never thought my mom knew about me. And she did. Fifty-four, fifty-five years old, however, I am amazed when I get alone with God. And I am praying to God. And I'm seeking God. I'm a person. I will say, God, what sin is interrupting our fellowship? What is not right with me? I want to hear, well done, Father. I want to know what's not making me well done. And I am amazed what the Lord shows me. And I am amazed, a man who's been married twice, looking for a third wife, pray for me. A man that has two children. I'm amazed, but the Bible says, I see my sins in them. I didn't teach him to do that. I got one more story and I'm done. I grew up with a dad that drank violent alcohol, drunkenness. I remember not just once, many times, at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, my mom would drag me up, wrap me in the blankets, put me in the car. We would drive around New London where we grew up. Uh, long enough to hopefully that my dad would fall asleep and pass out. I remember those things. I don't know what age I was, but I remember. I remember one time. I can tell you right now on the map. I, I, I don't know the name of the road. But it's, it was on Ocean Avenue. You show me a map, I, I'll tell you the name of the road. I was an ocean animal. We're going south. We're in the car and my dad come home drunk. Mom's got me in the car and I'm all covered up. My mom turned to me in tears. She said, Stiley, please, please, son, don't ever drink. I said, Mom, Maybe if I have a little, and I got whacked across the mouth. Thank you, God, for giving me a wonderful mama. Because that whack was, my mom didn't abuse me. She loved me. And she didn't want to hear her little boy say that. That little boy grew up lost. That, that boy grew up. He would go to parties, forget beer. I'm not bragging. I had Bacardi. I had Bacardi in my trunk of my car. I was a tow truck driver. We would tow in people who were caught DWI. Well, there was there was alcohol in the car, and guess who got it? I was in a drunken fit one night, and I was shaving. I had a guy, a guy take a loaded gun, loaded, safety off, and put it to the temple of my head because he didn't like how I, I, I shaved or something. I have terrible memories. Of alcohol and drunkenness with my dad. And I grew up.
and alcohol. And I thank God in 1990 after I met Lisa and started dating Lisa I thank God I got the victory over alcohol. We were married November 2nd, 1991. And you know what they were angry about at our, our wedding reception? Everybody was angry at Lisa and I because it was dry and we ordered no alcohol. And we said, hey, the place had a bar. You go over there and you get your alcohol over there, but you cannot. You will not bring that into our reception hall. We had a couple of people from our wedding reception went and joined another re wedding reception just so they could drink. Not Lisa and I. My children never, thank God, never grew up with a dad that had alcohol. Now, my son had to grow up with me smoking cigarettes but late in the 1990s. God gave me the victory over that. It's hard to quit. It's hard to quit. But you need to quit. Because there's consequences. We know the story of David and Bathsheba. But look at the consequences. Yeah, God forgave David. Amon, Absalom, that little baby, Adonijah, Tamar, the, the overthrow of well, twice in the third tri tribe, Joab. Was it worth it, David? Some of you are going to listen to this and you're going to look back and say, no, it was not worth it. You got scars and you got wounds. And they'll be there to the day you die. Thank God if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive and to cleanse. But be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. 